Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the wrap-up interview session in Singapore uh, during the uh, Asia PCR 2017. I'm Rose Lee from the National Heart Institute, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. With me is uh, our Dr. Peter Stella from Utrecht, Holland, and also Dr. Jack Tan from Singapore. So let me ask uh, the first question to uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Stella. Peter, there are so many drug looting stands nowadays, the second and third, uh, and so-called even the fourth generation drug looting stands. Do you think that one DES differs from another? Thank you. I think I think there's certainly there's a difference uh, in in DS. I think in what we have learned over the past years is that um, the latest generation DS in common has much more efficacy than the first generation, uh, especially if you compare to the bare metal stands that we were using 15 years ago. So in general, efficacy is better. Um, however, um, there are still unmet needs in certain populations such as diabetics, uh, elderly patients, patients with bleeding risks. And if you look carefully into the uh, data of those patients in all the latest generation DES, the results are not so great. So there's still a high late loss in diabetic patients. Um, there's a bleeding risk. We've got rid of the stent thrombosis by prolonging the ABT, but this comes as a cost. So there is an unmet need still in a certain population, especially in diabetics, which is a high number here in Asia. <laughs> Um, and in the fragile patients. Right. Jack, to expand on what uh, Peter just said about the unmet needs, in particular the diabetics, how do you see the create uh, polymer-free and polymer drug looting stents uh, in terms of uh, trying to overcome the problems uh, in treatment of patients who are diabetics? So, thanks, Rosie, for the question. I think uh, in this region, particularly in Southeast Asia, in my country, as well as Malaysia, our PCI subgroup, the percentage of diabetes in Singapore is 43 percent, 45 in Malaysia, yes. and high in Brunei. Yes. Especially in the subgroup of ACS, the younger patients, this percentage goes to 70 percent, which is a terrible phenomenon. And this pandemic has come across Asia, Middle East, and across the world, across the globe, but more acutely felt in my region. So there's really a huge cohort of patients. Every other PCI I'm doing is in the diabetic patients. And we know that this diabetic subgroup tends to have more events, more intimal neoarthrosclerosis, and uh, more target lesion failure, and more lesions as well. So going back to the CREATE technology, I think just a quick summary of what the CREATE technology is trying to achieve. It's a very innovative technology with a reservoir uh, technology on the abdominal side, combining uh, propriety and filaments drug, which is a serotonin compound bounded with a fatty acid captured uh, inside the reservoir in a controlled release kinetic. There's a physical release kinetic from the abdominal side over two to three months. And this uh, release kinetic is especially important due to the formulation for diabetic cells. I think diabetic cells are particularly resistant to serotonin compounds and usually you need about 10 times higher concentration within the cell to retard intimal hyperplasia. So in this case, this formulation potentially aids absorption of serotonin compound because of the fatty acid binding into a diabetic cell and therefore concentrate the drug concentration where it's most needed. I think um, some of the earlier studies when I made uh, uh, surprisingly showed comparing the leading class tanks like Zine in the reservoir study and the early uh, pilot studies comparing against Texas Surprisingly, in the diabetic group, the late loss is better than even the non-diabetic group and is clearly superior to leading class stents like Zines in terms of a late loss of less than 0.2 consistently. So I think it's promising and uh, we are hopeful for better, more larger studies to be done. Peter, Jack has, has stated about the uh, efficacy and we now understand that uh, when we look at a device like a drug thing stance, we don't just look at efficacy but we also look at safety. What do you think are the features in CREATE that also helps to increase its safety and therefore overall benefits of a drug looting stance? I think you, you touch a very important uh, point there. Um, you have to have a combination of both to have a very effective uh, stent. So the CREATE has been shown to be very efficient already in the diabetic subpopulation. We've learned from several trials already um, that they have very good results there. Um, however, 
good results don't mean anything if you have a less, uh, less of a safety profile. So this is another thing that we uh, tried to demonstrate um, in the study which was called to demonstrate is that um, we uh, investigated uh, by OCT the endothelial coverage of the create uh, at three months versus a well-known bare metal stent, the multi-link fission, at one month follow-up. And this showed that the endothelial coverage was exactly the same, even a little better, uh, than the bare metal stent at three months. So this show has shown already safety. There's a lot of uh, registry data already, um, as well, where it has shown that this efficacy uh, is uh, uh, adjacent to the safety. So. Um, demonstrate um, and our own clinical data, uh, a huge short uh, study where we looked again at reduced DAPT in a difficult uh, lesion subset, diabetic patients, uh, which showed um, no stent thrombosis, no bleeding risk as one year follow up. Um, so data so far has shown that uh, the CREATE has the combination of efficacy and safety and safety which allows you, if you want to, in high bleeding risk patients, to reduce the APT. Um, and finally, uh, is to really prove this concept, uh, we are currently doing a study which is called the Recreate, uh, comparing the Create versus the Resolute Integrity. And in elective patients, we will then reduce the APT to just four weeks uh, and follow these patients up to three years clinical follow-up to see if this promising results of the earlier trials and registry are really uh, there. Jack, there have been uh, some data that has been presented in uh, this Asia PCR. Um, do you think that with the data that is currently available, that this new technology, this technology with uh, CREATE, uh, will be able to raise the performance of the ES to much higher levels, especially in patients who are diabetic? I think we are looking forward to the latest trial that the company is trying to do. I think in terms of diabetic subgroup, it's a challenge for all stands currently. If you look at how the company has evolved its earlier studies from the first uh, next study which randomized against Texas and it shows a su superiority in the diabetic subgroup and in the reservoir study which randomized against Zines. A bit small numbers but it clearly shows better efficacy in the diabetic subgroup compared to the competitor stance. And the latest diabetic study is a larger randomized trial uh, led by Antonio as a PI which will look at the outcomes versus the Zines stance. And um, I think I shared with uh, Peter as well just now in the symposium that I was wondering whether even uh, uh, create stand can be randomized against CABG in the diabetic subgroup. But it's, it's true that in common day-to-day -day practice, what we're doing is that we're trying to put in a stand which we think has the greatest efficacy, especially in the diabetic subgroup. In my mind, efficacy rather than safety in the diabetic subgroup because diffuse disease, small vessel, recurrent target lesion failure. So I think uh, looking at whether this stand outperforms a stand like Zines, which is currently the class leading stand, is a good way forward for us to understand whether this stand really outperforms in this, although niche, but a huge uh, problem for us. Thanks, Jack. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.